felt really excited. I've been waiting to try this makeup for so long. And you're probably like, why the hell would you be excited for Daiso makeup? But isn't it like, I feel like it's always a good feeling knowing that there's some like good shit out there for like dirt cheap. And I think because of the success of the poop puff, um, this isn't the poop puff, but, but this is one of like the variants of the um, makeup sponges that they came out with. Um, but I feel like after that uh, whole sensation, they decided to release like makeup at Daiso that's like like legit makeup. They've always had things like brow pencils and like clear mascara, but this time they have like pretty much a whole collection. So I went to Daiso and I bought pretty much everything. Um, it's kind of like a brand that they have there. And I don't know if they have this brand at other places. I could probably be completely blind. It was already available somewhere else, but this is the brand 720. They have everything they have like uh, sun cream, cushion, eye makeup. Um, lip stuff. I went to the Daiso at... Where was it? Oh, in Shincheon by uh, Hongdae. I bought everything. It literally came out to only 45,000 won and you're all like, that's a lot of fucking money. And you know, it can be a lot of money, but a lot of like makeup that I review, like a cushion that I review can be 45,000 won. So I'm really excited to see how well this stuff um, performs. There are a few things that are missing from this collection, but they do have other stuff at Daiso that, like the eyebrow pencil, this doesn't have an eyebrow pencil, this brand from what I saw there, uh, but Daiso has their own eyebrow pencil, so um, you don't necessarily, like I feel like these days uh, the makeup game is getting much better, so you don't necessarily have to like go out and buy a fucking 89,000 won palette, you know what I mean? So let's just uh, get started. I'm gonna start off with the Everyday Tone Up Sun Cream. There's so many awards on this packaging, like there's all these cute little things on there that I can't even find, like I don't even know the names of these, but on the size it claims to be a CC cream, a primer, and I, I feel so weird whenever base pods that aren't actually labeled primer, that aren't primers to begin with, always label themselves as primer, I just get really nervous. Um, but it's SPF 50, PA triple plus, and I actually tried this on my hand last night, and the texture is actually really nice, it's not greasy, um, it leaves your skin feeling soft. I wouldn't say like I feel like moisturized, well it was my hand. I, I didn't feel like it was like, oh moisturized, but it seemed like a nice texture uh, as a sun cream. Filming an uh, S-Log 2, so right now on my monitor, everything is like gray. So hopefully, um, this turns out okay. Right there, just like a sun cream. It's called a tone up sun cream, but I don't know if it's going to actually like tone up my face. The texture does require kind of like blending because it is a little bit kind of like on the thicker side. It does absorb into the skin so it's not feel like like it doesn't feel like it's sitting on top but you definitely want to make sure you rub it in well, uh, really well. Um, I don't feel like my skin <laughs> is getting toned up or whatever. Um, they're probably just talking about the tone up that you get that you naturally get from using like physical sunscreen. But the smell, it smells just like sunscreen. I actually really like that texture. It doesn't ball up or like pill up because some sunscreens can, while you're blending it, they can get all like peely and nasty and that's when I feel like my makeup isn't gonna look good right, sitting on top of it. But the whole CC cream and primer thing aside, as a sunscreen, it feels really nice. It's almost just like a thicker version of like those really watery sunscreens that I use from like Bior in Japan or um, like that really watery one from Too Cool for School. So I really like that. Now we've got the, see what I mean? These are two, these, this the same cushion but in two different colors, but the packaging is really confusing. Like the whole display is really confusing because everything is all over the place and not organized properly. And a lot of times young girls will go in there and start like testing everything and like not putting things in the right place. But this is the real velvety cushion. This one is in natural beige and this one is in light beige. Oh my god, that's actually really cute. And I have to say the packaging in a lot of these are, is actually really high quality. It's a soft matte finish. Like it doesn't feel like something I bought at Daiso. Even the cushion, even the puff itself feels like um, the Naked Face one. It doesn't feel cheap at all. Oh my god. I don't know if you can see but it's like a really squishy, soft velvety plush feeling. Oh shit, sorry, hold on. I forgot to say the tone up cream. It's only 3,000 won. That's like less than $3. It's like $2 and some change. And then the cushion is only 5,000 won. And on this one, it claims to be a BB cream, a, a primer, moisturizer, and it has SPF PA triple plus. So this is one of those things I feel like when some products like to claim multiple things like, oh, 10 products in one, but like three of the claims will just be three different words for moisturizing. This is the packaging on the light beige one, still the same puff. This one is natural beige and this one is light beige. 
And they both kind of have like a neutrally pinky grayish undertone from what I can, we'll see how it is on the face. Just for reference, I'm a MAC NC25 and I have oily-ish skin. It's getting a little bit uh, more dry now that the weather's cooling down. Yeah, I think this color's more neutral pinky. I do want to build it up though slowly so I am using like little product. I don't want to go in too hard because sometimes I make the mistake in some foundation reviews where I'll, where I'll like dip in way too much and then at the beginning I'll be like, oh my god, it's such full coverage. Um, that's only because I've used so much on the puff. But then later on as I'm testing, I find out that it's actually not as full coverage only because I, as you know, when you get a new cushion, the sponge is a little hard, but over time it starts to loosen up and then you have to like really like dig in. And because um, if you use too much, then you're obviously wasting uh, product. Yeah, this color is a little bit light. It's nothing too horrible. Um, I've encountered way worse and um, I could fix it with like other face products like uh, bronzer and things, but on its own, um, it's okay. It almost looks like a MAC NC20 maybe. And there it is on both sides. I can't tell how it looks on this monitor, but um, it's a medium-ish, pulling a little bit low medium coverage. I'm assuming it's a matte foundation because what well, I can see it's more matte. And it does say real velvet cushion, so that probably means like matte. And usually matte foundations are easier to build up for in coverage because um, they just do. Even in taking into account like in person and like with all my lights, it's still a little bit light. All right, so I built it up a little bit. This one also kind of smells sunscreeny. All right, there we have it. The real velvet cushion on both sides of my face. I was originally thinking that if the um, natural beige one was like my exact skin tone, I could use the other one kind of in the center of my face to highlight a little bit, but this color is a little bit more on the light side and I don't think, I think it would look really weird if I tried to do that with the other cushion. So I'm just gonna leave it at this. Alone, it looks really pretty. It has a lot of qualities that, you know, a lot of matte cushions will have. My pores look a little bit more concealed. Um, I have a feeling it's gonna, like, it's creasing here. I have a feeling it's gonna crease, so um, I will powder. Um, there was actually a, before this came out, there was a powder um, that got, got kind of traction in, like, social media because um, it was kind of basically like the Innisfree no sebum powder. Um, I don't have that because I forgot to get it. But uh, to keep in theme with like the whole inexpensive makeup, I'm gonna use the skin food powder. I do like how um, the finish is super natural though, cause it did leave, even though it says it's velvety, it did leave a little bit of like a natural sheen on the skin. And I think for like maybe like a student that would be buying this makeup, uh, I think it would be really great for every day. And also because again, this collection doesn't have brow products and I forgot to get some from Daiso. Um, I'm just gonna use one of my favorite go-to brow products that's also really, really cheap. It's the Egg Lips. Auto, natural auto eyebrow. Been a little strong today, but it's okay. Now I was thinking that I was gonna go into the blush because they're, oh, these are really cute. Baby-like blusher, that's adorable. But um, I usually do eye makeup first. So I'm gonna do my eye makeup with him. Again, no eye primers and I need eye primers. So I'm gonna use my usual. All right, while we're letting that dry, I'm gonna show you guys the Bling Bling Shadow Palettes. This one is in Pink Bling, and this is a Brown Bling. And I saw the testers in store, and they actually look pretty legit. You know, this packaging feels just like the Ryan eyeshadow palette from the Face Shop. Like, it even gives me the same vibes. That's, oh my god, these are like colors I've kind of been using lately. Bitch, how much is this? 5,001. Girl, let's like pray to God. This is not praying. Let's pray to God that this shit is like legit. So the packaging looks a little cheap, but it feels like it feels pretty substantial. Like it feels heavy. Now I did say that I saw the testers, but I didn't like take a good look at them. I kind of just grabbed the palette and put it in my shop, in my shopping cart. Um, but I'm surprised there are, is this matte? Yeah, there are three mattes and there are three shimmer because most cheap eyeshadow things are usually all shimmer because I'm assuming I guess it's cheaper to make shimmer shadows, I don't know. But that brown one, and even this pink one, there's three mattes and three shimmers, so I think that's fucking amazing. Applicator that it comes with. Um, sponge you could probably use, but this is like the scratchiest, like, it's, it feels like um, buzz clippers, like those clippers that you use to like shave your head or whatever. 
Sometimes it comes with a brush to help clean out the like part where the that cuts the hair. It feels just like that. It feels so hard and scratchy. I don't hell no. But other than that, so I'm swatching these on my hand, and the shimmer on this one at least, this white one, feels really like bitch. Really, oh. it is a little crumbly though. But I mean, with these things for the price, you kind of give and take. Girl, she is not fucking around today. <laughs> And I will include a brush swatch clip here um, with primer. Sorry, you can see the, this tint stain on my hand, but applied some primer to my hand and I used a flat shader brush um, and it kind of dips into the shadows and it kind of went back and forth on my hand. And as you can see, all the colors worked really well, except for um, you can see that the lighter shades on both formulas uh, would aren't that pigmented. The shimmery one, I definitely would use a sponge applicator or my finger anyway, so I don't really recommend using a brush like this. Um, this one, it's just it just happens to be really light, but everything was really buttery and smooth. The lighter shades though, from both the matte and the shimmer sides, like the lighter shades of the three, are a little bit more crumbly, like I said, but um, I don't think it's nothing you can't work with. I am so fucking impressed right now. They look so good. So same deal with this one, I used primer and a flat shader brush, and again, they worked they all worked really, really well, but um, once again, the shimmery, the lightest shimmery one, I would use my finger because a brush doesn't seem to uh, pick up that color. My brows are so fucking off. I am so sorry. Girl, I tried to fix it, but I think I made it worse. So then I tried to fix it again, but I think I just went back to the fucked up brow. <laughs> no, I don't want to get too crazy because sometimes I feel like whenever I'm trying to eyeshadow palettes for the first time on my channel, I get too crazy and try to like mix all these colors when in reality I only ever use like maybe max three. And Daiso does have brushes, but they're really scratchy and I feel like it would be more interesting if I tried to definitely make these work. And in order to do that, I feel like I have to have at least some decent brushes. So um, she's going to use her, her good brushes. I'm going to use this shade all over my lids first. Oh lord, there is a lot. You probably can't see it. There's a lot of fucking powder. You know what this collection of colors reminds me of? It reminds me a lot of the Pony and Mimi Box Shine Easy Glam palettes. So if you want those, but you want something cheaper that's kind of similar in like the nikim and feeling of the the uh, color story, then you can probably go for these. Uh, then I'm gonna use this color right here. Oh lord, that is uh, she's not aligning very well. I have to just keep going at it. But yeah, there is a lot of fallout when you're digging into the shadow. Not digging, I'm not like digging, but like when you're kind of like patting your brush in, there is a lot of kick up. What I really like though about the uh, colors in this palette, just by looking at them, there's not a lot of like, like, cause a lot of cheap eyeshadows, they'll put a lot of white pigment in the color. So they'll look really just like pastely and chalky, but there's a lot of depth in a lot of the colors in these palettes. However, it is kind of making my eyes look a little crepey. A lot of decent eyeshadows will kind of smooth out the surface of your eyeshadows. But you know, it is the nature of some shimmery shadows to kind of make your eyes look a little dry and crepey. But this isn't too bad. Um, if you want to avoid that, you probably might just use one of the matte shades. I did use a shimmer on my eyelid, so. But on the lid, it looks more kind of like satiny, kind of glowy. It's not too shimmery to where I would only want to use it like in the inner corner. Now the color I would put on my lid, I would normally take down here, but I think that shadow wouldn't look really good under, uh, like under here. So I'm going to use this color. Yeah, that one had way less kick up, but there, you know, it is still really powdery when you're uh, tapping it off. Now I'm going to use this shade right here on the outer corner. Oh, bitch. All right. And that's when she knew. She won the lip sync. Okay. I think I just forgot to tap off the excess because here I tapped off the excess and I placed the brush here and it's not as like, she's not uh, coming off as strong. And I think I'm going to use this shadow on the lower end. Again, normally I would use that third shadow here, but um, I don't want any shimmer on my lower lash line. Well, it's not so much that I don't want shimmer on my lower lash line, it's just that I feel like with that shadow, there's going to be a lot of fallout on my face. Now before I finish this up, I do want to put a little highlight on my inner corner, but I think I'm going to go in with this one. Both of these light highlight shades are a little bit chalky and um, like the glitter is really chunky. 
one in the pink palette is more, a little bit more smooth. You know what? Fuck it, I'm gonna try it anyway. I'm gonna try this one. But what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some on my finger, kind of rub it into the back of my hand to take off any of that really like chunky bit, or at least smooth it in. Yeah. That's really strong. Like the amount of shimmer in there, or the amount of glitter. Okay, I'm gonna stop because it's starting to look really crepey. All right, this is becoming a completely just not even full face of Daiso makeup. Uh, I did use powder foundation under my eyes here to do that thing where I kind of clean up the inner corner. All right, now we've got the Girl Crush mascara again with the random package. I have a feeling that, yeah, everything is kind of divided between per like lavender and like pink packaging. Again, really, really cute packaging. Uh, that soft matte finish again um, with like all the little drawings and things are more shiny, but it doesn't feel like the cheap sticker or kind of print that will just rub off. Yeah, it's not, it doesn't seem to rub off easily, like I'm scratching it. All right, so this is um, kind of like your typical brow, not brow, fucking uh, like mascara one. No, panda, okay. <laughs> Um, curling, volume, and long lash. Hmm, sounds nice. Two shades right there. Of course, you're black, and then the brown is kind of like a greenish brown, which I like. Has a bit of like a mossy undertone, so that's the one I'm going to use. Um, my lashes, as you guys know, are already quite long and thick, so I don't really um, wear mascara too often. I really just do this to take off the powderiness that eyeshadow can cause sometimes. But uh, this seems. Like natural mascara. Let me see if I look down. I don't know. So yeah, that was really nice. But again, um, my my eyelashes are already pretty good, so I can't speak to those. Or I can't speak for those that are, have like really short, like straight lashes. Oh my god, this is so cute. And the packaging is not like it doesn't look cheap. Maybe it feels a little cheap, but I think the design is really nice. Uh, this one. We've got love pink here, and then we've got orange sherbet. Sherbet? Sherbet? Chabet? I don't know. Real? I don't know if you can even see this on camera. Again, everything I'm seeing is uh, gray right now. Uh, but it's really there's lots of white in this color, so um, it might look a little chalky on certain skin tones. So I'm gonna use the orange chabet one. But yeah, when you dip your brush, there is a little, quite a bit of powderiness. I can't tell if that's the actual color or I'm just lifting my foundation off. Coming off a little bit warmer on the skin, which is a good thing for me. Um, I was afraid it was going to look too pastel-y. Right now... It's quite nice. It's really natural, um, but with K-Beauty it's more about like a really like faint flush on the cheeks. Lately, the, with um, the advent of like American makeup, uh, girls are a little bit more um, willing to put like stronger blush, but this is very like typical natural Korean makeup. All right, now time for the thing that I feel like a lot of people get excited for is the lip product. There are two types of lip products that they have. Um, they've got the Very Good Balm, which is just a tinted lip balm, and then they've got the Deep Oil Tint. Oh my god, look at that. Adorable. But again, the same like matte, soft matte packaging. And this is what the applicator looks like. I was kind of expecting something different. This looks like a regular tint um, because it's an oil tint. I thought it was, I don't know, I was just expecting something else. Holy shit, that, that is strong. The pink one is a little bit on the neon side, which um, I mean, I haven't tried on my lips, but I'm not really a fan of that. Uh, but the red one is really pretty. That looks like a really modern kind of red that I would find in the road shop or even like, you know, anywhere else that would not be Daiso. Nah. She didn't try on here. So this is the lip balm. Um, yeah. It's like one of those really, it's kind of like that jellyish looking lip balm that has color in it. This reminds me of like, you remember when YouTube was on that most, world's most beautiful lipstick thing? The, I did try one on my hand once and this is kind of similar to that texture. Oh my God, so, sorry, I keep talking unfocused, but it feels more like, um, cause there are some lip balms like from Burt's Bees that have color in them, but it's kind of like a lip product that just sits on top of your lips. But this one feels more like, it feels more like it's staining your lips. 
All right, so there's a lip bombs. Same order, orange, pink, and red, but I don't feel like they really match their names. Like they all just look pink to me. Like that is supposed to be orange sherbet. Let me use the pink one kind of all over my lips. Oh God, why y'all tell me I fucking crusties on my... That feels nice. These are the, this feels like those lip balms I gravitate towards that are uh, more, like they're, they're more thin, but they feel like they're penetrating the lips better than, because I'm not really a big fan of Burt's Bees. I mean, I do use it often, but only because I have them. But the Burt's Bees, I feel like it's just wax. It sits on top of your lips. And I'm not really a big fan of that. But I'm gonna apply that. I'm gonna take off the excess. And then I'm gonna take, let's try the red one, maybe? I don't know if I'm gonna regret this or not. That is fucking strong. And I don't think it matches the eye makeup, but you know what? Fuck it. Okay, I thought that maybe laying the orange one would do something, but no, it just made it worse. Okay, this feels more like a summer spring makeup to me, but um, it's still pretty natural. I think it's just the lips. <laughs> Alright, so I tried all the products, and I have to say I'm really I kept forgetting to say the name of the fucking prices. Sorry. The blush was 2001. The crush on mascara, 2001. The oil tint, 2001. The Tinksy Betty Good uh, lip balm, 2001. I watch a lot of American beauty YouTubers and they'll often go to places like Family Dollar or Dollar Tree and get like cheap makeup just to try it out. But I think the main difference between maybe Family Dollar makeup and Korean Daiso makeup, uh, they might have this in Japan, I don't know, um, is I feel like these are legit things you could probably, you can probably use the stuff from like Family Dollar or whatever, but honestly, I feel like the quality of these is, like I wouldn't be embarrassed pulling this out to use it. And I know there are many students that watch my channel or you know people that don't want to spend too much money on makeup, so I definitely recommend checking these things out if you your coloring suits the stuff that are in here, of course, if you're a deeper skin tone, um, you can try the other things other than the cushion, I guess. But I think the eyeshadows are really good. I think everything is good. I'm not angry at anything in here. Hi. Um, it's only been a few hours since I filmed the video. I'm actually editing it right now. Um, but it doesn't look like it's holding up too well. Or on the outer parts of my face, it's okay. But you can see that my oil is definitely coming through and it's causing it to break down really quickly. There are some, a lot of foundations for me They'll be able to handle the oil a little bit um, better than this, but this one seems to just like immediately break down. And also I would be careful if you have dry skin because it kind of on my chin, at the crease of my chin right here where it is quite dry, it was really not cracking, but um, if you have like dry skin and you have like uh, really, ex you know, lots of lines around your eyes or anywhere on your face, it will probably bunch up and crack in those areas. I think this is probably gonna be better suited for people with normal skin. Um, if you're on either extreme, you might not like it. And that sunscreen is actually pretty decent. It's, and it's only like, what, 5,000 won? So if you don't wear sunscreen, which you should wear every day, definitely try out the uh, sun cream one. And I don't feel like it left like a white cast on me either. Even in these lights, it's probably on camera, but um, in person with the lights on me, I didn't notice it giving me like white cast. And the cushion kind of settled in to my skin tone a little bit. Still wish it was like a smidgen deeper. I've seen this at Daiso in Gangnam and Daiso in Shincheon. I'm not sure about every other Daiso. Um, and who knows, maybe there's other things I haven't tried. So uh, I guess check out the Daiso that's near you. I don't know if it's available in Daiso in like America, but definitely in Korea. So yeah, thanks for hanging out with me today and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Mwah. I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> Cause I like you a lot.